This guy was born in Loris, but he was immediately ordered back to Tabor City. That's a good move on Loris's part. He was first exposed to the dance in 1966 when he gave a friend two dollars and a pass blue ribbon to take him to Ocean Drive. In his words, he was mesmerized, hypnotized, and hooked all at the same time. He danced for the first time at the barrel, and after that, every spare minute that he could, he could get here, he was here dancing at the pad, the beach party, the barrel, and the original Spanish guy. He was a military bat and, and moved around Please, please, please be quiet. He was a military brat, moved around the U.S. and Germany. After high school, he did the military himself. He did the hard things, the airborne, pathfinders. He is another one of our Vietnam heroes. He started competing, and I remember that well. He went at it with a passion like no others. He, uh, he would come up after the competition was over and say, hey, Bo, I like that thing you do. How about showing that to me? And all of us, I mean, we can remember, he'd take you in the corner. And of course, he'd always buy you a drink. Because <laughs> he had one himself. <laughs> uh, good friend of mine, he would, he and I spent a lot of time discussing the dance and the music, always over cocktails. <laughs> uh, we've solved a lot of problems. One night, uh, I had to be 3, 3.30, I heard a knock on my door, actually it was a major rap. And uh, I go to the door, and he and one of our young protégés, and I promised Grace that I wouldn't mention his name. <laughs> I was standing there. They had shut down all the joints, but they needed one more or two more. Uh, they were wearing Jägermeister cowboy hats. <laughs> Somebody was giving out Jägermeister that night. Oh, well, we saw the sunrise. I joined him. I, he, uh, I'm afraid uh, Grayson was drinking that Jim Beam or some bourbon stuff. But now he's grown up and become a lawyer and he drinks scotch with him. <laughs> <laughs> but Jim was still, he's still drinking the Jim Beam. And uh, of course he got behind my little galley and he was the bartender and he did real well. Kept me up all night and all half the day. But uh, he is my buddy and I can always tell when he ends a conversation because he, he says, that right. <laughs> that right. He is an intergalactic winner along with Bob. <laughs> he got in there a long time ago. Uh, Pete, I'm really concerned about myself because I can really understand what he's saying and Pug. <laughs> People say, what is that? That was obvious. <laughs> he said so and so and so and so. And I understand about it. Wanda? I was just going to tell one little story. Um, Jim used to come up to Columbia to Lake Murray and stay with Norman and myself. Norman was out sailing one day, and um, Jimmy and I just loaded up a little cooler of beer and got in the bass boat and took off across Lake Murray. And the story Norman told later was he looked up and he said, that looks like my bass boat. <laughs> he looked a little closer, he said, looks like my wife. <laughs> I believe that's Jimmy Soames in the boat with him. <laughs> and of course, he had water and we had beer. So we just circled around a few times and made him beg for it. And uh, Mama says that was back before Jimmy quit drinking. 
So Jimmy Souls, would you please come on up here? Honey? And that's his top speed right there. Closer to my mouth. Okay. <laughs> Let me start over. I love y'all, and I thank you very much. I want to thank Chicky, Kelly, Sam, Wanda, all the Hall of Fame board, everybody in here. I mean, I mean, I can just, Charlie, I'm glad to see you, brother. I come to see you today. You wouldn't open the door, but I can't help <laughs> But anyway. Thank you very much. It's my honor and a privilege to be standing up here, and I thank you with all my heart. Yeah. And I got one more thing to say. I want to recognize my mother. Yeah. 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 And that's right. And who are you going to dance with? Oh. His lovely wife, Jill. With my 